Hello, and welcome to the first part of the business dining etiquette experience. The answer to the first question is, well, because you signed up, and hey, thanks. There are multiple answers to the second question. First, as you prepare to graduate from university and interview for jobs, some of your interviews may take place during a meal. Lack of strong dining etiquette skills could make you look bad and worse, eliminate your chances at being selected for the job for which you're interviewing. Later in your career, you could be entertaining someone you hope to sign as a client or even interviewing a potential job candidate. In both cases, making a good impression for your company and yourself are important. How you handle yourself at the table under pressure with a mouthful of food can either positively or negatively influence a business decision. The best tools in your toolbox in this situation are knowledge and preparation. Louis Pasteur says, fortune favors the prepared mind, and in this case, the prepared etiquette muscles. You are far less likely to be intimidated by a situation in which you already have some knowledge and for which you feel prepared, right? So, let's begin. Arrival at the table. Before the meal, shake hands with anyone already seated at the table and introduce yourself if necessary. This, of course, changes if you all meet in the vestibule of the restaurant or if you all go to the restaurant together. In that case, introductions will already have been made. When you are shown to your table, everyone will likely sit simultaneously. You remain standing until your host sits. If someone arrives to the table after you do, it is polite to stand and greet them. If you're in a suit, keep your jacket on during the meal. You may unbutton it for comfort when you sit, if absolutely necessary. If for some reason you are wearing a hat, remove it during the meal. It should be placed under your chair or checked if the establishment at which you're dining has a coat hat check. Nothing should be placed on the table. Handbags, sunglasses, phones, pad folios. All of these should be placed under the table by your feet or under your chair. Ordering your food. When the server approaches the table, don't ask him to explain everything on the menu. One or two items are okay, particularly if you have a food allergy or other dietary restriction. Follow your host's lead. If they are the first in line to order, choose something similar to what they order. If they opt for a sandwich, don't order the prime rib. If the host isn't first in line to order, ask for his or her recommendation. And of course, don't order the most expensive thing on the menu. Order foods that are easy to eat. Avoid messy, difficult to eat clean dishes such as spaghetti or ribs or cobbed corn. As mentioned above, it's best to follow your host's lead when it comes to ordering alcoholic beverages. If you do drink, limit yourself to one glass. Place settings. When you eat, follow a simple rule. Work from the outside in. Begin your meal with the smallest fork, which will be the furthest from your plate, and work your way in as each course goes by. Drink from your own water glass, and don't make the mistake of taking from your client's bread plate. Remember that your beverage will always be placed on the right side above your knife and soup spoon. The placement of your bread plate may vary depending on the establishment, but it is most likely on the plate in front of you at the 12 o'clock position of our place settings or at the 11 o'clock position, directly over your forks. Look at the place setting in this picture. Can you properly name all of the utensils? On the left, remember, from the outside in, is your salad fork and then your entree fork. On the right, once again, outside in, fish fork, soup spoon, dinner knife. Directly above the plates, your dessert fork and your teaspoon. The bread plate with the butter knife is at the 11 o'clock position. In the most common of business meals, you are unlikely to have a formal place setting, as this is more common at galas, award ceremonies, or banquets. However, all learning is knowledge and therefore good. I wanted to at least present it to you. The main event. When the food arrives is the appropriate time to put your napkin in your lap. Leave a bit of a fold in the napkin so that when you use it, you need only lift the fold to reach your mouth rather than lift the entire napkin. Dab at your mouth, do not scrub. It is impolite to begin eating until everyone at your table has been served. 
It is generally considered gauche to salt or pepper your food prior to tasting it. Don't speak with utensils in your hands. If you need to speak, place your utensils on your plate until you have finished speaking, then resume eating. If you happen to have an utensil en route to your mouth when a question is asked, place the utensil back on your plate, respond to the question, then pick up your utensil and resume eating. Drinks are fairly easy. Don't stir your iced tea with your knife. Don't slurp or gulp. Hors d'oeuvres. Again, take your cue from your host. If they order an appetizer, you may feel free to do so as well. Once again, avoid messy finger foods. Salads. Cut your salad before you start eating it. A good bet is to do so in a crosshatch pattern. Do this as thoroughly as possible to avoid the dreaded hanging lettuce. You want to make sure that anything you put in your mouth will fit without having to look as though you have overextended the opening of your mouth, as well as making your cheeks puff out like a chipmunk. Soups. If it is a clear broth or a soup without chewables, you sip the liquid from the spoon, don't slurp, as opposed to putting the entire spoon in your mouth. The proper method, dip your spoon away from you, touch the spoon to the opposite side of the bowl to avoid a drip, then put it to your mouth. For a soup with chewables, the method is the same, although now you will, of course, put the spoon in your mouth. Never leave your spoon in the bowl. Between bites, lay your spoon on the plate beneath the bowl. Bread and butter. When there is bread at a table, it will either already be plated for you or it will be in a bread basket. If it is in a basket and someone asks for the bread, you never pass it across the table. In fact, nothing is ever passed across a table. We'll talk more about that, but for now, the person closest to the bread receptacle picks it up and it is passed to the right, counterclockwise, from person to person until the requester receives it. Okay, you now have your roll. How are you going to eat it? First rule, no butter sandwiches. Break a small piece, apply the butter, put the spreader down, then eat the piece. Repeat, but not in such a way that suggests that you have not eaten this week. Meat and potatoes. When cutting and eating a piece of meat, the knife is in your right hand, the fork in your left. Cut a bite-sized piece of meat only as you consume them. Don't cut the entire piece of meat into pieces as you might for a small child. Then switch your utensils and hands. Put the knife down, eat the piece of meat. If you are left-handed, you don't have to do the switching of utensils, but you will still hold your fork in a manner that does not have you eating from it upside down. Try a little of everything on your plate unless you have a food allergy. You could come across as unsophisticated and juvenile if you only eat your steak and potatoes and ignore the veg. If the food served is not to your liking, it is polite to at least attempt to eat a small amount of it. Additionally, don't overindulge or ask to finish anyone else's food. Cut only enough food for the next mouthful, and as soon as you cut it, eat it. Don't spear a piece of meat, get it halfway to your mouth, then leave it hanging there as you respond to a question. Again, should you find yourself in the situation where you have picked up food and someone asks a question, lay the fork down and respond. When you have finished speaking, resume eating. Eat in small bites and do so slowly. Do not play with your food or utensils. Never wave or point or indicate with your silverware. Don't lick your utensils. Don't lick your hands or fingers. And though it shouldn't need to be mentioned, we'll mention it. Don't speak with food in your mouth, ever. Dessert and coffee. Refer to the previous diagram to know which utensil to use. If it is not a seated formal dinner, a utensil will usually be brought with your dessert. If you have coffee, dress it without shaking or flicking the sugar packets. 
Tear a corner of the packet and pour the contents into your cup. Fold the packet and place it in an unobtrusive place on the table. Under the rim of a saucer is acceptable. When you stir your drink, do not hit the spoon on the inside of the cup. Do not tap the spoon on the edge of the cup when you have finished stirring, and do not lick the spoon before putting it down. Place the spoon on the saucer. If there is no saucer, place the spoon to the right of your plate. If it is served with a cup and saucer, you pick up the cup but leave the saucer on the table. Pick up your cup. Don't extend your pinky finger. Put your index and middle fingers through the handle of the cup with your thumb placed on top of the handle to steady it. Your ring and pinky fingers should be tucked underneath the handle. Of note. Passing dishes. We've already talked about passing things to the right or counterclockwise. Other passing rules include salt and pepper. Salt and pepper always travel together. If someone asks for the salt, you pass both the salt and the pepper. The milk or cream pitcher or the salad dressing cruette. This is always placed with the handle of the pitcher extended toward the person to whom it's being passed. A few general reminders. Appropriate conversation. Stay away from controversial topics. Most of the conversation will be determined by the type of meeting this is. If it is an interview, you'll be talking about the job, your experience, and background. If you are wooing clients, you'll be discussing them, their company, accomplishments, etc. Excuse me, please, from the table. If you need to leave the table during the meal, Put your napkin on the chair, push the chair back under the table, and go do what is necessary. There is no need to announce where you're going or what you'll do when you get there. Coughing and sneezing. Do these things into your left shoulder. Turn your head to the left. Use your left hand to shield your mouth and nose. Excuse yourself when you're finished. Never use your napkin to blow your nose. Excuse yourself from the table and do that in the restroom. Dropped utensils. Should you have the misfortune to drop a utensil during the meal, do not dive under the table to retrieve it. Leave it where it lay and simply ask your server for another the next time they pass your table. Keep your elbows off the table. Do not eat from the table or, God forbid, your lap or even worse, your beard. This is not specifically dining etiquette, but rather general courtesy and bears mentioning. Do not take calls during the meal. In fact, putting your phone in your pocket or handbag for the duration of the meal is your best bet, and be sure to mute it. Après meal. All done. When you have finished eating, use the proper finished signal. You will signal this to your server by resting your fork times up, and your knife with the blade facing inward at the 10 to 5 position on your plate. They might also just ask you if you're finished. The check. The host will, of course, pick up the check. Don't offer to pay or split, unless, of course, you are the host. Then you pay the bill. Good night. Thank your host. Shake his or her hand. Tell them how much you enjoyed the meal and company. Then off you go. That's it. Not terribly difficult, is it? I know there were some maneuvers I spoke about that might have seemed confusing. Don't worry. The second part of this experience is an actual meal. I am happy to demonstrate anything you didn't understand at that time. 